This is a journey. Journey which along the way will bring to you new color, new dimension, new value. Y'all. Young brothers like yourselves. What am I supposed to do? Old grown up try to smoke me? You shoot the motherfucker if he don't kill me first. You're doing exactly what they want you to do. Uh -oh. Thank you, Thank you, young brother. Thank you, young brother. Thank you, young brother. Time to get this money, man. has been charged in a devastating mass shooting of a six-month-old girl in Chicago. Police claim the alleged murder was in retaliation for a stolen video game system. Coleman Willis is facing first-degree murder and aggravated battery with the firearm charges after he allegedly shot dead baby Janila Watkins while aiming for her father, Jonathan Watkins. Police Superintendent Gary McCarthy said at a Monday press conference that Mr. Watkins had earlier robbed Willis, prompting a spray of bullets. The man turned himself in on the weekend, though he is yet to provide a statement and no weapon has been recovered. But witness accounts and pictures of the shooter's van leaving the scene were among the evidence that led police to file the charges. Little Janila was struck by a bullet on March 11th while she sat in a minivan with her father, who was also shot three times, but survived. Reverend Corey Brooks, who held an emotionally charged funeral service for the baby in March and is acting as a spokesman for the family, said Janila's parents had been cooperating with police to find their daughter's killer. Brooks added that Watkins, 29, who has a lengthy criminal history and was criticized by the community in the wake of daughter's death, had not been asked by police to identify a possible shooter. Police said they've been pounding the pavement in the case of Janala Watkins. Baby Janala Watkins was shot as she and her father sat in the car. She survived a separate shooting of her mother, Judy, when she was still in the womb. Jonathan has been very cooperative. He's worked with police diligently. He wants the person to be caught. The smiley baby was buried amid emotional scenes in a Chicago church on March 19th. As the tiny baby of Janina lay before mourners in an open coffin, Reverend Brooks called on local gang members to change. Change. The baby's maternal grandmother, Mary Young, also read a poem pleading for the local community to change, saying, My neighbors of Chicago, what have thou done? Janela died on March 11th when a bullet tore through several organs in her body and what was the second time the infant had been a victim of gunfire. When her mother Judy, 20, was eight months pregnant, she was shot in the knee as she walked home with a group of women. Janela's father was shot multiple times in the attack that killed his daughter but survived. At the time of the funeral, Frustrated, police said no one had yet come forward from the local community with information to help the murder investigation. A family member is so torn by the incident that he needed to be consoled during Janala's March 19th funeral at the New Beginners Church in Chicago. She said, My neighbors of Chicago, our youth is in danger on the streets of the town with the false code of silence while they shoot each other down. My neighbors of Chicago, take back your home. Don't spare the rod and leave your children to roam. Reverend Brooks echoed Miss Walken's sentiments in his eulogy. I want to challenge you to get clean change. And then change starts with believing you. 
change, she said. Janila had been sitting in her father's lap in the driver's seat of a parked minivan when Willis allegedly opened fire. The baby, whose mother was working at McDonald's at the time, died the next morning from her wounds that the surgeon spent hours trying to save her. McCarthy initially said the shooting appeared to be gang related, though detectives didn't have a specific motive until Monday. Despite the shocking crime, neighbors were refusing to cooperate with, with police. We don't have one individual who's stepping up to help us, McCarthy said in late March. Though it appears the community came forward with information and photos in the intervening months, Reverend Corey Brooks breaks down during his eulogy. It's kind of hard to be in front of this at the same time, you know, everything is really happening. The church was full of mourners, even people that wasn't even in the family came. In March, Mr. Walkins told the Chicago Sun-Times from his hospital room that he was devastated by the death of his infant daughter. I was trying to help her, he said, breaking down. Still, he claims he has no idea who shot at them or why he was targeted. The fatal shooting came months after Janala's mother, Judy Tooney, was hit by a gunman when she was pregnant with Janala. Her family said Miss Watkins was hit in the knee when she was eight months pregnant as she walked home with a group of women. Scores of people have been killed in Chicago this year, most of them victims of gang-related shootings on the south side of Chicago. Chicago gained national attention when its murders for January spiked to 43. The highest rate in years, making the city even more dangerous than when mobster Al Capone ruled the streets. Police initially said Mr. Watkins had links to the Gangster Disciples clique through his family, but denies he has ties to the gangs. Willis allegedly shot at the father and baby from an alley and hit Mr. Watkins in the cheek and buttocks. Chicago police spokesman said. The gunman then got into a nearby blue minivan and fled the scene, according to the DNA info. Dominique Young, 21, Mr. Walken's sister, said she heard the gunfire and arrived at the van within seconds to find a window had been shot through. They knew she was in there, and they tried to still take my niece's life. This is so wrong. Reverend Brooks. Church New Beginnings, Church of Chicago, was offering a $5,000 reward for information that leads to an arrest. It's unclear if such a tip led to the arrest. The family had called on the cowardly gunman to turn himself in, which is what police said happened on that following weekend. With the click of the ballpoint, raw joints is made, whether depicting my flaws or getting my paws dirty. Some say that my bar's wordy, I got dues to pay off, I drop jewels, I'm ate off, but spit a verse synagogue worthy. Now really, it's a y'all music, my saying is all foolish, but come on stupids, let's tell the truth, we can't all do this. Tell me what would y'all do with get ghosts was considered low on the totem pole, so people scold them, now you honing, cause you know you prone I told you so. Today we're going to start with a tragic story from North Minneapolis. A 13-year-old boy is dead. His 12-year-old friend is hospitalized after they were shot last night. Police found the 12-year-old in the street near 16th and Upton Avenues. As he was being transported to North Memorial Hospital, he told police that his friend was shot nearby. And police found the 13-year-old boy a couple blocks away. He was pronounced dead on the scene. An Anoka teen admitted to the 2011 mistaken identity murder of a 13-year-old boy. Don Quarius Devon Copeland, 19, acknowledged that he fired the 357 semi-automatic pistol that killed Ray John Gomez and said he knew he'd hit somebody. I shot two times, Co Copeland said under questioning by his defense attorney, Eric Hawkins. 
Copeland's admission Thursday came in a plea bargain in the August 24, 2011 death of Gomez, whose death shocked Minneapolis. The victim was riding piggyback on a friend's bicycle when he was shot. For his plea to a charge of second degree intentional murder and second degree attempted murder, prosecutors would recommend a punishment of 34 years and two months in prison. Another defendant, Derek D'Angelo Ketchens, 17 of Brooklyn Park, pleaded guilty last year and is scheduled to be sentenced April 10th, 2012. A third defendant, Keeman Lovato's Taylor II, 27 of Robbinsdale, is to go on trial February 10th in Hennepin County District Judge Daniel Mobley's court on two counts of first degree murder. One alleging premeditation, the other alleging the shoot was intentional, and four counts of attempting first degree murder. Copeland, who was 16 at the time of the crime, had been scheduled to go on trial with Taylor. As part of the plea deal, prosecutors will call him to testify against his co-defendant. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman said his office made the offer because we got a sure thing, 410 months, that's a long, long, long sentence. Under current practice in Minnesota, inmates serve two-thirds of their sentence before they are eligible for release. Copeland will be almost 42 years old before he will be let out and placed under supervision of a probation officer. Members of Gomez's family sobbed during the brief change of plea hearing before Mobley, but outside the courtroom after the proceeding tempers flared between Gomez's family and Copeland's family. As the two groups exchanged heated words, one member of Copeland's entourage remarked, Everybody just lost somebody. A reference to Copeland's going to prison, and it prompted the victim's mother to cry out, I'm never going to see my son again. A sheriff's deputy, four had been in the courtroom during the hearing, stepped in and sent the sparring families down separate banks of elevators. Police say Copeland, Taylor, and Captains had gone out that August night to revenge the recent wounding of Taylor's younger brother, identified in court documents as JT. On August 7th by a member of a rival gang, JT who had been shot in the arm in the incident was with them. They were cruising around in a van registered to a church pastored by Taylor's father. We were going to go down there and shoot at people. Copeland responded to Hawkins when asked why they were driving around. The prosecutor said that as Taylor drove, Copeland and Ketchins passed a 357 SIG semi-automatic handgun back and forth. Taylor suggested that Ketchins and Copeland stop talking about shooting someone and just do it, Mobley wrote in an order last year. About 9.30 a.m., they neared 17th and Russell Avenue North in the city Willard Hay neighborhood and saw Gomez and two other youths on two bikes. Gomez was riding piggyback on one of the bikes. Taylor parked the van and Catches and Copeland jumped out with the gun. At his plea hearing last year, Catches admitted he fired three shots from the handgun. Then handed the gun to someone else. At his plea hearing Thursday, Copeland said he got the gun from Ketchens and fired twice. Did you think you'd hit anybody? Hawkins asked. Yes. Copeland replied. A bullet struck Gomez in the back and exited his chest. He jumped off, cried, I'm hit. Ran down an alley and cut across a backyard. Investigators believe he died within minutes. His body was later found in a wood pile next to the house. A 12-year-old who had been pedaling the bike Gomez was riding was struck in her right shoulder, but survived. Catchers and Copeland got back in the van and Taylor drove off the state claims. The teens killing outraged residents of North Minneapolis. Prompted by Gomez's death and fatal shootings of a 14-year-old boy days before, then Minneapolis Chief of Police Tim Dolan put extra officers on the street and issued a public appeal for help to solve the crimes. Two days after Gomez was shot, Minneapolis police searched a home in the 2400 block of Lindale Avenue North where Catchins and Copeland had been staying. There they found the weapon used in the killing. Catchins admitted at his plea hearing that Gomez was not the person they had been looking for. 
Katniss and Copeland pleaded guilty to second degree counts of murder and attempted murder and the charges say the shootings were intentional. Copeland's sentencing is set for March 24th. The plea agreement calls for 410 months on the murder count and 153 months on the attempted murder conviction. Assistant Hennepin County Attorney Elizabeth told the state would ask that the sentences run concurrently. Niggas ain't really your bro, niggas ain't really your bro, and we done lost a cover this year. It's so your girl, all us right here with each other. Man, DJ Dash, man. We mean business, I'm here man. with my brother. According to Johnny Northside of Minneapolis blog post, this is what's been said on his post. A source has been feeding me details information on the blood relationships and public records of various members of the criminal Gomez clan. Board shooter Melo Deshante Gomez. This is his picture. Fired at two police officers solely for the purpose of making his day a little more interesting. This led Johnny Northside to Facebook where Melo's relationship to other tragic people named Gomez became apparent. And from there, things snowballed as the tangled tale of one family came to the forefront. Their story intertwined with a number of homicides. These Gomez family members, all by themselves, have been responsible for so much crime that it's safe to say the cost to taxpayers runs into the millions. Here are some of the Gomez's. Deshante Demar Gomez, aka Shante who is Melo's brother. Deshante is currently incarcerated and charged with the murder of Keontrell Govin, AKA Fat Fat. This is a brief description of his story. Ismael Rashad Moore and Deshante D. Moore Gomez, both 17, had been charged in the shooting death of 18-year-old Keontrell Govin. Co police found Govin with a bullet in his head last Wednesday afternoon in the alley behind the church of St. Bridget in North Minneapolis. Like Medics rushed him to North Memorial Medical Center, but he died on Friday. Moore and Gomez were both charged in a juvenile petition, each with a single count of second degree murder. They are scheduled for a detention hearing at 1.30 p.m. where prosecutors will ask that both young men be tried as adults. Witnesses who knew Moore and Gomez placed both teenagers first at a nearby convenience store on Dowling in Fremont where they were throwing gang signs and Moore was seen with a 9mm pistol in his hand. Others saw Govan run into the alley, one witnessed the shooting and others saw the pair running from the scene of the shooting leaping over a backyard fence as they tried to escape. Also, Keontrell Govan, known as Fat Fat, should not be confused with Anthony Fat Fat Titus. The second Gomez, Ray John Gomez, a 13 year old who was gunned down 2011. The third, Chardon Gomez, who murdered two senior citizens in their home because they were the parents of a crackhead hooker he knew and she was set to inherit money. Melo Deshanti Gomez, who died of homicidal violence on March 23, 1995. Melo D. Gomez was the father of Well Melo D. Gomez, the young board shooter. Identical twin sisters Carmen and Camille Gomez, two women who has racked up 78 criminal charges between the two of them, my sources states, Carmen is the mother of tragic little Ray John Gomez. Once upon a time, there were several siblings, and they pretty much all went bad. All the siblings were named Gomez, except for the last one, who was named Joey Smith, but he had also went bad. Here are the names of all the siblings. Carmen was the mother of Ray John, who hung out with the gang when he was only 13 and was gunned down. Like her drug-using prostitute sister, Camille Gomez, Carmen Gomez, had quite the criminal record. Camille was the grandmother of board shooter Milo D. Gomez and Deshante Gomez, who was charged with the murder of Keontrell Fat Fat Govin. So that will make little Ray John the cousin of Milo and Deshante. 
Sometimes when thugs say he's my cousin, well, he really is their cousin. The mother of Milo was Dejan Nequel Armstrong. Milo's father and the source of his surname was Milo Deshanti Gomez who died of homicidal violence in 1995. But when Milo was born, Milo Sr. was still around. Milo was born with a deformed arm. Milo Jr.'s parent filed a lawsuit v. North Memorial Medical Center. And Folo's Milo D. Gomez always seems to be hiding his deformed left arm scrutinized the form left arm like this photo. A search of court records also turns up a probate document for Melo Deshanti Gomez from when he died in 1995. Melo Deshanti Gomez, the older one, the boy shooter father, attended high school at Maplewood Academy in Hutchinson, Minnesota, where he is also pictured hanging around. The strong family resemblance between Los Dos Melos, the two Melos, it's painfully obvious. Thus it would appear this one screwed up of brood siblings has been responsible for a crime wave lasting well at least two decades. And we haven't even scratched the surface of the history with Mark Gomez, Charlene who died of the drug overdose, Darian Gomez, or Joey Smith. This photo was found at one of the Facebook memorials to 13 year old murder victim Ray John Gomez. It shows him either doing a gang sign or emulating a gang sign. Who would put this photo into an RIP Ray John Facebook memorial? Was it some of the same people telling KSTP Channel 5? Oh no, this shooting wasn't gang related and describing many gang banger Ray John Gomez as a normal happy kid? One version of the facts for the television cameras and another story for the homies on Facebook? Why is the mainstream media blind to these facts? Ray John's mother is a thief. Most of his extended family is involved in criminal including G's murder and also public postings on Ray John's Facebook page show cute little Ray John hanging out with the stick up boys. If we are ever going to get to the bottom of the teen shootings in North Minneapolis, then the mainstream media needs to present the full, unvarnished truth and not the BS, sentimental whitewashed tales about the lives of these tragic dead children. Update March 6, 2014 a Hennepin County jury sentenced a man Wednesday to life in prison for the fatal shooting of a teenage boy in North Minneapolis back in August of 2011. Keeman Taylor II was convicted of nine counts including first degree murder in the shooting death of 13 year old Ray John Gomez and the attempted murder of two teenage boys who were with Gomez. Taylor 27 was immediately sentenced to life in prison without parole. It took the jury about five hours to reach its verdict. Taylor was 25 years old at the time of the shooting. According to the criminal complaint, he convinced Don Quarius Copeland, who was just 16 years old at the time, and Derek Ketchins, who was 15 years old, to shoot at Gomez and his friends in the North Minneapolis alley on August 24, 2011. His two accomplices pleaded guilty to second degree murder in the death of Gomez and testified against Taylor. These types of crimes shock the conscience of the whole community. Boys shooting boys, egged on by an adult is sickening. Our prosecutors worked hard taking the good evidence developed by Minneapolis police and I'm pleased to say that Mr. Taylor will not be causing any more deaths on our streets. According to the testimony in the case, Taylor was seeking revenge for his younger brother who was wounded by a rival gang member. At his plea hearing, Catchins admitted Gomez was not the person they were looking for. The person standing in the middle of the picture, throwing up gang signs, has a strong resemblance to Ray John Gomez to the left. Is this the person they was mistaken Ray John Gomez for? He looks a lot like him. And until next time, I am A. Hildreth, and this has been an episode of Destination Devastation.
goals, pretty known as far as local goals, but got global goals. A young nigga rapping nothing beyond his postal codes. Me with the mind is global pose, she's the bindings, speaking anything that he spoke upon. Who's being dishonest, seeing his progress like, no, I leave no Muhammad, show me where the cash is.